Grinding and Black Desert Online. Name a more iconic duo. Whether you need rare items, experience, or just raw silver, grinding is your best option. I would even venture to say that 90% of the content in this game is based around grinding. Which is why I find it so surprising that not many players truly know how to grind, myself included. I'm coming up on 5,000 hours and I still had to research a proper elixir rotation for this video. So whether you are a brand new player or someone who's been playing for years, I guarantee today's guide will teach you something. What's going on everyone? My name is Saint Felipe and you already know the vibes. Turn my music up. I grind too hard for y'all not to see me a star, bitch. I'm raising a bar like they really pay me to talk my life in a shambles. But I got handles, I'm finishing at the rim. I remind you time and again and again that I'm really him. Oh, you ain't up. Before we dive straight into the guide, I do want to take a second to ask for your help. You see, I'm attempting to join Black Desert Online's content creator program. In order to do so, they require 1,000 subs on this channel, which is where you come in. I post all kinds of Black Desert related content, so if you enjoy what you see, then consider tapping that subscribe button. If you're interested in supporting me, then for now, this is honestly the best way to do so. In this video, I will start by teaching you what it actually means to grind in Black Desert Online. Then, once we are all on the same page, I'll give you a step-by-step -step explanation on how to optimize and grind efficiently. Step 1 is to understand your class and make sure you are geared properly. Step 2 is to master the location you are grinding at and find a good rotation. Step 3 would be to learn how loot works and some tricks on how to pick up and store it all. Step 4 is managing all of your buffs, droughts, elixirs, and all other methods to help with clear speed and XP gain. Then we'll end off the video with a couple in-game examples so you can see how to apply all of the things we go over today. Alright, let's start with the basics. Grinding in regards to Black Desert Online is simply when you travel out to a grind spot to kill mobs for their XP and loot. This loot is then utilized for personal use or sold for cold hard silver. There are many grind spots spread all across the world map. So many in fact that it is hard to tell which ones are actually worth going to. On the map itself, you'll be able to see the attack power recommended to grind there. If you ever want more information, you can click on the grind icon on the map to pull up its AP slash DP requirements, the loot table, and any quest related to that area. This little window found in game is useful, don't get me wrong. But to get a greater understanding, we're going to pop over to a third party website called Garmoth.com. Garmoth.com is quickly becoming the best resource for all things Black Desert related. Here we can find information on what grind spots are currently making the most silver and input the loot we grinded to automatically calculate how much silver we made. I just want to make it clear that I am not sponsored by Garmoth.com, I actually just think this website is genuinely that good. Now that you understand what grinding is and we are using the same tools, let's really get started with the guide. The very first step to grinding is knowing how to play your class. Unfortunately, I can't sit here and tell you all of the information for every specific class and spec out there. That would turn this video into a 12 hour endeavor, so instead I'll give you the next best thing. Here's a checklist of concepts that apply to all classes. First, make sure that you know your PvE skill rotation. This is different for every class, but for the most part, you pre-buff and then spam your most damaging moves. Second, make sure you know what skills can aggro enemies from a distance, allowing you to group them up more efficiently. Third, you would want to know all of your movement skills to help you get from pack to pack faster. Lastly, double check your add-ons and make sure you are stacking things like monster damage to increase the speed you clear mobs. All of this information for the class you play can be found here on YouTube with one quick search or found on your specific class Discord server. There will always be a meta with some classes considered to be the best or most efficient. If you're into that kind of stuff, then there are plenty of tier lists out there. If you want my honest opinion, I think that every class in this game is good at grinding and there are definitely a few that stand out for being great. Just make sure you enjoy the class you choose to grind on, because realistically you're going to be grinding for hundreds to thousands of hours on it. Also keep in mind if you choose an S tier class but you are a C tier player, you can only expect C tier results. I don't say that as an insult, more as motivation. Black Desert Online has a high skill ceiling, so if you want to have a more efficient grind, then mastering your class is the very first step. Most topics about gear are way outside the scope of this video. Just know that it's okay to have gear that's higher than recommended. If you think about it, killing monsters faster is almost always a positive. When you hit the point where you have to decide between damage reduction and evasion, just understand in most cases evasion feels tankier for PvE. Also, Blackstar weapons have built-in monster damage that will quickly add up to more damage while grinding. 
Artifacts also now play an integral role in grinding. There are lightstone combinations that can fill the gaps in your build. If you need more damage, then the wild combination will increase your clearing speed. If you need to be tankier or are getting hit by a ton of crowd control effects, then a more defensive artifact setup can help. There are also really niche artifact sets that can massively increase your damage to a specific type of monster, such as the Wild Camasylvia, which will massively increase your damage to monsters found in the Camasylvian region. There are so many useful lightstone combinations, and if you want to find one that suits you the best, I'll leave a link to a helpful resource down in the description. In Black Desert Online, even the locations we grind at have some level of a learning curve. Generally, you want to find a rotation that loops around in some form of a circle. The goal is to never have to awkwardly stand still waiting for monsters to respawn. Another crucial step is to make sure your horse is close to your rotation. We will go over why in the next segment, just make sure that homie is somewhere safe and nearby. A lot of popular grind spots also come with their own mechanics, so make sure you understand these to speed up your grind. Talking about every specific grind spot is of course way too much for this video, but if you're interested in learning more, I have started posting videos devoted to some of the most popular grind spots on the channel. I'm sure with just a quick google search you'll find a whole review for any grinding location in this game. Loot in Black Desert Online can be broken down into two categories, trash loot and rare drops. Trash loot can be expected to drop from every single monster in the grinding spot, whereas rare drops, as the name implies, are the items that have a chance to drop from monsters in the zone. You can increase the amount of trash loot and the rate of rare drops using a plethora of buffs. There's a lot to go through here, so let's jump right in. Let's talk about category number one, which is our trash loot. Like I mentioned before, these drops come from every single mob you kill in the grind spot. So the only thing we can buff here is the amount of trash each monster drops. To do so, we are looking for items that will increase the item drop amount. The first buff to do this will always be an item collection scroll. This buff has two levels. Level one will increase the drop amount by 50%, whereas level 2 will increase the drop amount by 100% at the cost of this buff running out twice as quickly. Anytime you go grind, you will be using this loot scroll buff. Whether you use level 1 or level 2 depends on the location that you are grinding. The second main way to increase your item drop amount is using Agris Fever. Agris can be turned on by right-clicking this icon in the top left of your screen. You will burn Agris every time you kill a mob, with some mobs being more efficient than others. There is a whole entire journal quest line that you have to do in order to unlock the full potential of the Agris Fever buff. It is highly recommended to finish this quest line as soon as you possibly can. After you complete all related quests, Agris Fever will increase your item drop amount by a whopping 150%. Occasionally, Black Desert Online will have events that grant players items like this. As you can see, upon using this item, I will get a 100% item drop amount buff to stack on top of the buffs we previously mentioned. Now, let's talk about rare drops. The stat related to how often these rare items will drop for you is called item drop rate. You can find your current item drop rate by pressing P in game and then selecting these cross swords. Near the bottom, you can see your current item drop rate. If you thought the buffs for item drop amount were complicated, buckle in because we have a lot to talk about. So much in fact that I will be skimming over a lot of these. Just like the trash loot, the most common buff would be the item collection scrolls. The nice thing about the item drop rate buff is that both level 1 and level 2 versions will grant a 100% increase to your item drop rate. Another common buff can be found in your pay to win tent. The adventure's luck buff can grant up to 50% increase to item drop rate for 50 million silver. Speaking on pay to win, if you have a Blessing of the Camasylvia buff active, you automatically get a 20% item drop rate buff. There are lightstone combinations that can grant upwards of 30% extra item drop rate. Both the Arctic Fox and Prestige Black Panther pets can grant up to 5% item drop rate. Using contribution points and energy, you can level up the node that you are currently grinding at to increase the drop rate by approximately 5%. By having 5 in your luck stat, you will passively get an extra 12.5% drop rate. Ecology and Knowledge, which is a whole nother system in the game that can all be found by pressing H in game, can contribute up to a 30% extra drop rate buff. Just for the world being nighttime will grant everyone an extra 10% drop rate. For grinding on a PvP server like Arsha or Season Arsha, you will have an extra 50% drop rate. If your guild owns a castle from Siege, then all players in that guild will have a 50% more drop rate 
in grinding zones close to the castle. There's a whole family fame system that can grant upwards of 10% extra drop rate. All of these buffs, and I haven't even begun to talk about the millions of events Black Desert has that grant items that can give anywhere from 5% to 100% drop rate buffs. One notable event is a raw 50% extra drop rate applied to all servers. You can see if this event is active by checking if this icon is in the top left of your UI. I understand that trying to comprehend all these different ways to increase item drop rate is overwhelming. So I left a link down in the description to an article on blackdesertfoundry.com. I use this article pretty often as a resource to make sure that I'm min-maxing my item drop rate. I just threw like 100 concepts at you in quick succession, so let's reel it back a bit and review how loot works in BDO. Two categories, trash loot and rare drops. To increase the amount of trash, we need to increase our item drop amount. To increase the amount of rare drops, we need to increase our item drop rate. Depending on the grind spot, some buffs will feel redundant, so using every buff at once can feel like a waste. Towards the end of the video, I will go over a couple in-game examples so you understand what loot buffs to prioritize. So we understand how loot drops, but now how do we get all of these juicy items into our inventory? Pets would be our answer. First, I want to clear up some misconceptions. You are not forced to spend money on pets. In Black Desert Online, there are five tiers of pets. Just by completing the in-game quest, you can expect to have a roster of T3 pets and one tier five pet to lead them. This, in most cases, is enough to keep up with your clearing speed in most grinding spots found in the game. That being said, it should also be obvious that a full roster of tier five pets would perform better. Before you start grinding, make sure you have all five pets summoned and all of them set to agile to effectively pick up all of the loot off of the ground. All of this loot we are picking up gets pretty heavy and takes up a lot of space. In BDO, we have storage and market maids to help move trash and rare items to either the closest town or to the central market. These are extremely helpful but also have a long cooldown, so many times you'll find yourself without maids and out of weight to keep grinding. This is why it's important to bring your horse anywhere you wish to grind. Overstacking on your horse is easy and will allow your horse to carry an infinite amount of trash loot no matter how heavy it is. To overstack, all you have to do is access your horse's inventory and then place your trash loot inside. If your horse already has trash loot in its inventory, then transfer it all to your inventory, then back to the horse. By doing this, you'll be able to overcap the weight limit on your horse, which will allow you to keep grinding for hours and hours without worrying about running back to town. Our full buff rotation to use while grinding can be overwhelming. And from my experience, this seems to be where most players get confused. Not all of these combat buffs are needed, so I'll make sure to state that as we go. Let's start with what I would consider to be our core buffs. These combat buffs are going to be the foundation to build from. Food is where everyone should start. Make sure to pop a simple cron meal for 120 minutes of the best food related grind buffs in the game. The next go to buff can actually be found in your equipment menu. Here in the center, you can socket an alchemy stone to help with your attack speed and overall damage. Ideally, you have a Vel's Heart in this slot, but I would say most players are not actually at that point yet. So if a Vel's Heart is out of your reach, then I would say any Destruction Stone will suffice. The last core buff is a bit more complicated. I recommend pretty much always popping a Body Enhancement Villa buff. You can pop this buff at your pay-to-win tent, but you either need the Secret of the Old Moon or a Villa Scroll in your inventory. These next buffs can be popped in any major city. Head over to the church and speak to an NPC to grab your church buffs. There have been some major quality of life improvements to the system. Now all you need is 30 million silver to get a 300 minute buff to your attack, defense, and XP. The last step in our go-to grinding buff rotation would be adding in droughts and elixirs. Quick side note, you will lose all of your elixir and drought buffs if you die. In regards to these buffs, you have two options. There is a simple drought setup and an advanced version. The simple version is used in most situations, so let's go over that first. This setup consists of one drought and one elixir. Now let's go over your options. On the drought side, we have a beast, giants, and frenzy drought. All of these droughts last for 15 minutes, but can be upgraded to a magical version to change their duration to 60 minutes. Frenzy will give us the highest damage in this drought slot, but will also have the downside of making us take way more damage. To offset all of that extra damage we are taking, the Frenzy Drought gives us built-in life steal to keep us alive. Speaking of droughts that give life steal, let's talk about the Beast Drought. Similar to the Frenzy, but we get less of a damage buff. 
The real strength of this drought is in the 10% monster damage reduction, making this our most defensive drought option. Lastly, we got the Giant's Drought. This drought gives a sizable damage increase with no lifesteal at all. The Giant's Drought has a strong niche in places where you can hit the monsters with crowd control effects. The extra back attack and down attack damage provided is exclusive to the Giant's Drought. Moving on to Elixirs. These will all last 20 minutes each, meaning that you need 3 to last a whole hour. The Spirit Perfume Elixir is the go-to for most players. This elixir is so strong because it allows for your hits to give MP back. For many of the classes in this game, managing your MP is a struggle, so this elixir alleviates that problem. The Perfume of Courage will give you more damage than the Spirit Perfume Elixir, and is an amazing option if your class doesn't have to worry about MP. Lastly, we have Calc Elixirs as our tanky option. These are really only used in your first hour and places you're unfamiliar with or to help you push into grinding spots you really aren't supposed to be yet. On August 17th, 2022, a new skill was added in the game for our fairies called Continuous Care. This new skill allows our fairy to auto-use things like elixirs so we don't have to manually pop them in our inventory. The ability to do this has now made full elixir rotations way more viable than they ever have been before. There is pretty much no detailed guide for a full PvE elixir rotation, so I've been working with my buddy, it's underscore blue, to provide all of you with a written spreadsheet to reference. Now there is a lot to take in here, so I'll go nice and slow. Pause. The four defensive elixirs that we want to pop are Remarkable Will, Grim Soul Reaper, Draining, and Steel Defense. The six offensive elixirs to pop are Sharp Detection, Lethal Assassin, Lethal Destruction, Endless Fury, Shock, and an Area Elixir. The area elixir depends on what grind spot you are grinding at. For example, we will use a Gyphon elixir in Camel Sylvia, Demi Human elixir when grinding mobs that are classified as Demi Human, and a Human Hunt elixir to hunt human mobs. This brings our full elixir rotation to a whopping 10 different items to use. The worst part is that most of the time you'll have to manually craft these using alchemy. On the bright side, the return for using these buffs can be massive, especially if we turn these buffs into their party variations, allowing them to buff up to 5 players total. Realistically, in most grinding spots you don't need to go the extra mile on a full elixir rotation, but there are definitely a handful of use cases that make at least knowing this knowledge extremely useful. Since the simple drought setup cannot be used at the same time as our full elixir setup, on screen I'll put up the total buffs you gain from each so you can decide which is going to be the best in your situation. Oh you thought we were done buffing? You were sorely mistaken. Now I'll go over all of the relevant XP buffs found in Black Desert Online. Pay attention to this segment as these buffs can make power leveling less painful for everyone involved. A Book of Combat is a great place to start. This game practically throws these at you through events and quest lines. This item will give you a whole 24 hours of 100% extra combat XP. This buff isn't anything insane, but it's so easy to get that it's almost always worth using a book of combat when you are leveling up. Now let's move on to the big XP buffs. There is a 600% combat XP scroll that you can craft if you get 3 of the daily combat XP scrolls. Simple alchemy these together in your inventory and you'll get the strongest XP buff currently in the game. The next big one can be found in your loyalty shop and are called the 530% XP scrolls. I also believe you can get these from events and they stack with the previous buffs mentioned making our XP gain actually insane. Another go-to XP buff is of course the XP church buff that we already talked about in the last segment. The last two viable XP buffs to worry about would be getting an artifact setup that provides an extra 400% XP gain, and to use a golden bell to give the whole entire server an extra 100% XP for 60 minutes. There of course is even more buffs than what I just mentioned, but I handpicked these as the easiest and most efficient to get going. For those who are really trying to min-max, I will leave a link to an article detailing every XP buff found in-game. All right, to get started with today's example, you catch me at Heidel's church in order to grab our church buffs. So while I'm here, I'm gonna quickly grab the attack protection and experience buffs for 300 minutes. From here, we already have our buffs in motion. So time to get our asses in gear and run on over to Elvia Orcs, which is the place that we're gonna be grinding for today's example. Once I get to this location, I actually like to check some of the other rotations to make sure 
that we don't have anybody at war with us or anything crazy PvP wise that I have to worry about while I'm grinding. In my opinion, I think it's smart to get an idea of your surroundings before you start committing to a whole hour of grinding. And on my way to the main rotation, I actually stop by this NPC here to quickly grab the daily quest. The dailies here over at Elvia Oryx aren't anything insane, but will pay off, you know, eventually down the line, hopefully. Now that I made my way over to the main rotation, you will quickly see that there are quite a few people here, so it's not really worth me trying to PvP these guys or take the rotation. Instead, I actually opt to go into our Marnie Realm, which is a relatively new feature that allows you to grind for an hour straight without getting bothered by anybody. Now that we have our location secured and I'm ready to grind, all that's left to do is to pop all of our buffs. So we get started with the simple Kron Meal food buff, quickly followed up by the Body Enhancement Villa buff. Then I quickly grab the Adventure's Luck 5 buff from our pay to win tent that will allow us to get an extra 50% drop rate. Then I pop a Frenzy Drought, the magical version, so it lasts an hour. And I also use my fairy skill to pop my spirit perfume elixirs. I just do this because I don't like clicking it every 20 minutes. I oftentimes forget. Then I turn my pets on and make sure they're all fed and also set to agile. Now it's time for me to pop our loot scroll. And I turn this on to level 2, which is also known as a yellow loot scroll. And finally, I pop my Vel's Heart in order to continuously have that 5 minute extra attack speed and extra AP buff. From there, all of our buffs are pretty much ready to go and it's time for me to get started with the hour here at Orcs. As you can see, literally the first or second monster that I kill here actually drops a weapon for us. This is an Elvio weapon that is exclusive to all of the Elvio spots found in BDO. Once I pick this up, all the monsters should be dying in pretty much 1-2 to two hits, which is honestly an amazing way to start our hour. The only other mechanic you have to worry about here at Orcs is making sure that the lights are always turned on. These lights will actually make it so each Orc has way less DP or defensive power that will allow us to kill them really fast. Also, I should quickly mention that I am playing Awakening Striker for those who don't know what class this is. And I am currently 289 AP Kudum with a Tet Blackstar main hand. Also, at the time of this recording, I think this was my third or fourth day ever on Striker. I recently re-rolled off of Awakened Guardian when it comes to grinding. So if my hour seems a little scuff and my combos are a little weird, that's probably why. And now, as you can imagine, this footage is going to be an hour long because that's exactly how long our buffs will last. So I'm going to quickly skip ahead, and here you can see me actually dropping off all the extra trash loot on my horse. I'm using the overstacking method that I talked about earlier in the video to make sure that I don't have to run back to town or do anything crazy when it comes to storing all of this trash loot that we're getting from every single orc. And I'm going to skip ahead again so you don't have to sit here and watch me fight the same orcs over for an hour straight. Don't worry, you guys didn't miss anything. I just, you know, ran around in circles for an hour, punching monsters, doing striker things. And you guys actually catch me here at the very end of the hour, and now it's time for us to input all of our loot that we got into Garmoth.com in order to figure out how much money we made. And for those of you who are curious, or I don't know, maybe you want to compare stats, I did do this hour with a 290% drop rate buff. Also was on a yellow loot scroll, but I did not use any aggress at all for this hour. As you can see, I pulled very close to 21,000 trash at Orcs, which is actually pretty good. But unfortunately, I didn't get a single boss to spawn this whole hour, which is, in my opinion, extremely unlucky. But it's fine because I still pulled ahead with 670 mil for this hour. This is definitely not my best work, but will suffice for this example in a YouTube video. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our example. All that's left for me to do is to head back to town, sell the trash loot, and hopefully sell all of these other items off for as much silver as possible. Congrats, you have made it to the end of the guide. Holy, I did not think that this was going to turn into a 25 minute video, but it is what it is. Even though the video is over doesn't mean that the conversation has to be. Let me know if there are things I can improve on in the comments and feel free to ask any follow-up questions. I will try my best to answer as many as possible. I feel like I've taken up so much of your time already, so I'm going to end it here. Have a blessed one and I'll catch you in the next video.
Deuces. Take me back. Take me back to the winter days to see the times of the world and begin a stage. 23, I've been instructed by my lineage. Any means, any way, make cheddar cheese that guapale. I see my head telling, I don't see the need to stop the day. Opposition wildin', I'm not soldier boy, no rockaway.